first witness, please, Mr. McShruder. Now, Mr. McShruder, you understand that this is not an adversary proceeding. No indictments will emerge from any testimony you may give. Now, McShruder, I must ask you a question. And I'm afraid I've got to be blunt. Tell me how, with your small income, you were so quick to pay off Mr. Hitty and Mr. Lunt. Mr. Mervyn, I am sure you must be joking. Any campaign man would do what I have done. After water fence, I simply gave up smoking, and I put my extra pennies, one by one, into a little tin box, a little tin box that a little tin key unlocks. There's honor and purity, lots of security in a little tin box, yes, sir. <laughs> Second witness, please, Mr. Bean. Now, Mr. Bean, we have no desire to prosecute you, no desire to persecute you. But, Mr. Bean, I am told that you were single and remarried just last fall. I have to wonder how you manage on the salary you make to honeymoon at the Taj Mahal. You're implying I'm dishonest, and I say no, sir. There is nothing in my past I care to hide. I simply took some empty bottles to the grocer. And each nickel that I got was put aside. That he got was put aside. Into a little tin box. A little tin box and a little tin key unlocked. There is faith, hope, and charity, hard work, prosperity. Next witness, Mr. Kitchell. Well, the best of my recollection... Mr. I... Kitchell, you were a very important man in our governor. Well, at this point in time... <laughs> Mr. Kitchell, you're a campaign official, and your income is rather low. You've made a lot of phone calls. You've had your own chauffeur. Kindly explain how so. I can see, my friend, that you don't pull no punches. And it looks a little fishy, I admit. But for one whole week, Martha made my lunches and it loaded up my bank book bit by bit. Up your bank book bit by bit. Into a little tin box, a little tin box, a little tin key unlocked. There is something. In my lifetime in this Senate chamber, I have never oh, seen... Oh, shut up! <laughs>